have with us the Virginia Tech ISE, which is Industrial Systems Engineering Ambassadors. Um, and that we're gonna meet today with Ms. Hudson's fifth grade. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Jenny Lynn Johnson, Monica Mission, and uh, Roshan George. Um, so hello everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, as Phil said, we are the Virginia Tech Industrial Systems Engineering um, Ambassadors. We're a part of the Community Involvement Committee and we wanted to take a little bit to teach you something new. So I want to start off with who are we? So we are the Virginia Tech ISC Ambassadors. Um, with us, we have Monica, Roshan, and um, myself. So ISC Ambassadors, um, we basically just help show what ISC is. Um, so ISC in short is to make things better, um, whether that's a system or a process um, or a way that you do things which kind of falls under process. Um, that's basically the high level and um, this is something that we are all in class right now for and learning more about. So systems thinking is looking at a system as a whole instead of as a jumble of parts. So in a system all parts are connected, they're interconnected. If you change one piece it's going to affect the whole system. And so systems thinking is really important in ISE and in life because it allows us to think creatively and allows to come to, to new solutions and look at, at these problems from, from new avenues. And so when you want to make a change, some things to consider are to find the purpose of the system. What is the system trying to achieve? Determine how each part relates to each other. You also want to look at the big picture, try to identify cause and effect relationships, look for patterns and trends, and not try to jump to conclusions. And those are all great steps to help be creative problem solvers in your lives. So kind of going into the tools of a systems thinker. Um, so two things that we really look at is the direction and effects. Um, so kind of going through each box, we're going to start at the top left one. Instead of looking at every single dot individually, we're going to look at how they're all interconnected, meaning how they're connecting and how they're affecting each other. Next, we're going to look at linear and circular to the right. So instead of looking how one just goes into the next process and the next process, we're going to look at how everything ties together. So how the one affects the one before and then that one affects the next one and really looking at a circular systems thinking there. So one thing that we do to do this is through causal loop diagrams. Another word for this is feedback. So looking at your cause and effect. Um, so again, just kind of breaking down these big words of what they actually mean um, and its cause and effect. So in this, you look at your relationships and your behaviors um, of each part in a system. So how does your relationship between system one affect system two? Or how does you brushing your teeth affect cavities? Or how do you learning about something in your class be able to apply? it in your real life. Um, and just again, looking at how each of those are tied together. Hi, so there are two different kinds of feedback loops, reinforcing and balancing. So with reinforcing, it means that the different parts of the diagram are moving in the same direction. And so that means that the overall effect is compounded, which basically means that it's changing. It's always going increasing or decreasing, going up or down. And then with balancing, the things are, that are happening, the different parts, they're moving in opposite directions. So that means that the overall effect is equalized, which means it's not compounding or changing like it would have been if it was reinforcing. So now we're going to break it down again into kind of some real world, exam real world examples that will most likely apply to your life. So the first one on the left side here, we're looking at reinforcing. So let's envision back to the summer, um, maybe not this summer because it was a little bit different than ones previously, but maybe you have had a lemonade stand before. And during your lemonade stand, at least when I was little, was my goal was to make money because I wanted to buy bubble gum. Um, so what's the best way to make money at a lemonade stand is to sell more lemonade. Um, so looking at this in a cause and effect diagram, and a reinforcing, meaning that it compounds and it keeps getting bigger and bigger, um, you want to keep making money and making lemonade. So if we're breaking this down, we're looking at first the lemonade sold. You could start at either end, but we'll just start with this side. So with the lemonade sold, when you sell it, you make more money. This positive sign means that they have a positive relationship. So the more lemonade you sell, the more money you make, and they grow together. 
And then once you make more money, you're able to buy more lemonade supplies. So you are able to then sell more lemonade. Um, so again, a positive relationship. You have more money, you can make more lemonade because you have more lemonade slot supplies. So more lemonade, more money, more supplies, more lemonade, more money, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. And that's why it's compounding. So it keeps getting bigger. Next, you have balancing. So looking at the right side now, that's in purple. Um, I know the dentist is probably not always the most fun, um, but it's a great example to show how cavities and brushing your teeth work together. Um, another real world example. So when you brush your teeth, we're gonna start at the right side again. When you brush your teeth, you're decreasing the chance of you having cavities, meaning there's a negative relationship. So the more you brush your teeth, you're less likely to get cavities. And then looking now at how cavities affects brushing your teeth. So when you brush your teeth, you're less likely to get cavities. And then your cavities cause you to brush your teeth more if you do have them. So the more cavities you have, the more brushing your teeth you have. And then when you have, when you have brushed your teeth more, your cavities decrease. So it's constantly going up and down and eventually equalizes, meaning that it balances itself. I have a question or I have a, a, a thing that I think can, can bring things together because uh, I know that a few of these kids have have sold maybe not lemonade, but things like um, Girl Scout cookies or Boy Scout popcorn or something like that. Um, and so there's things, and I think you're gonna talk more about the system, but but you all know that like it's more than just having the cookies present. There's more to it, right? There's other things that are factors. Sell the cookies. Sell the cookies. All right. Right. Um, so one thing to really systems think on your cookies is where do you get your cookies? How do they get to you? Do you have enough of them? Um, and these are the type of questions that cause systems thinking and get you to think in this new problem solving mindset. Um, so with the logistics behind it um, as to how you're getting your cookies or maybe your sales, your salesmanship, um, how are you selling your cookies? Are you making them sound super yummy and appealing and maybe eating them with a glass of milk? Or are you saying, these are the worst cookies ever. I would never buy them. Would that help your system? No, you want to sell more cookies. And having that systems thinking of every aspect of how you want to sell cookies or how you want to make your lemonade. Um, going back to the lemonade example or even the cookie example, you most likely, I think I remember when I was a Girl Scout, we usually sold cookies when, I think it was around springtime when it was starting to get warm, but it was still a little bit chilly outside. And one of my favorite things is to cozy up near a fire and drink some milk and eat cookies. I think that is amazing. Um, and then one thing in the summer that I love to do is drink cold lemonade. Um, part of a system in selling lemonade is you're probably not going to sell it in the winter because people usually don't want an ice beverage, they want a warm beverage. So maybe selling hot cocoa um, in the winter, that's something that you could do instead. Um, and that's again, taking systems thinking into account of how each um, aspect of an issue is affecting your main goal, which is to make more money so you can sell more lemonade and make more people happier because you're giving them a refreshing beverage. She wants to, Audrey wants to know if you all have labs where you work on things. Yeah, I was going to say with manufacturing process, I don't know if you can see this, but we actually made a coin. Um, but yeah, it's a VT coin that, that we made that says ISC. And so we did that in manufacturing process and then we made it out of powder. And so the labs are actually really cool and fun. How long does it take to make something like that? They actually have a really cool machine that just grounds the powder into a mold. So it only took a couple of minutes, but then uh, there's a process of like heating it and cleaning it and cooling it. And that, that takes about a week, but we didn't get to do that part. But another thing that we get to do, we got to do some welding. We, we got to make a pulley. We got to use a CNC machine and, and sort of 3D design parts. So. So if when your program, when you're doing things like that, um, you have to think of all the factors that would be involved in order to make those, to make that coin and in order for things to actually get done or created. You have to think about all the factors and how it would affect that. So that's kind of what your, that's what your job is with everything you do. He wants to know if you use a 3D, a 3D printer to make sketches of things. Is that what you're saying? 
We use a 3D printer in some classes. Um, that's an area where people can really focus on um, in the different systems and areas of 3D printing. Um, so if you want to look at the system of manufacturing as a whole of how things are made, um, 3D printing is a subsection of that and we cover that in some of our classes. Thank you so much to Ms. Hudson and to Ms. Hudson's class. You all were great listeners and had good questions and I appreciate your help today. And also I wanna thank the uh, ISE ambassador team. You all did a great job. Bye. Bye. Thank you, bye.